Okay, so Jacek Jakowski from NYX is going to talk to us about some work he's done uh, with a multiple PI team from Clemson, from University of Tennessee, Oak Ridge, and uh, Nagoya University in Japan, I believe, on novel quantum chemical molecular dynamics for material science modeling. Uh, so Jacek's looking at development and application of molecular dynamics codes to material science uh, problems, and in particular, uh, parallelization of Fomian dynamics to run on Kraken. Um, so some very large scale work. Let me switch back here. Yep, great. We can see your screen just fine, Jacek. Um, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to talk about my work, and thank you very much for listening my work. Okay, so this uh, this project, uh, as uh, uh, Nancy mentioned, is about the development of uh, molecular dynamics, and we have uh, various approaches to that. So this is a big project, and it's a part of NSF-funded EBSCOR project, collaboration between South Carolina and Tennessee. And within this uh, this project, there is some. Uh, it was funded some infrastructure and also human resources, and then there was a scientific focus was material science and systems biology. And I was working on this material science. So, um, so the project overall, the project funded uh, some research and then also some communication uh, communication between uh, researchers how to uh, how to build the, the seamless communication from the from the uh, underfunded EBSCOR institution from South Carolina and Tennessee to the uh, to the, up uh, to the top of the of the uh, this pyramid the track one machine such as like Kraken uh, in Oak Ridge so basically on the this slide you can see the the overall over overview of the 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 map the map of the collaborations what institutions were involved in that project so Oak Ridge National Lab University of Tennessee uh, Vanderbilt University and from South Carolina major uh, uh, places were such as like Clemson University, South Carolina University, University of South Carolina, and uh, and several other. So uh, in my work, I was uh, in my work I was uh, particularly working with a few copies. With a fi uh, uh, so overall, there was a five copies and several other users, and we. We decided together that we can how we can approach this. So we decided that we can uh, 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 work together. We have there is enough overlap between us, and there is enough interest, science interest, that we can we can get together uh, interesting uh, project. And this project is called here an exit project. is called modeling nanoscale carbon and metallized carbon materials, and then uh, for the EBSCO desktop to the Ragrid ecosystem. So so basically we had uh, some science goals that we wanted to achieve, and also in addition there were some Community goals in which we agreed that we can uh, include some uh, researchers uh, if they want to collaborate with us, so uh, collaborate with us, or just try the, these larger machines before they can actually really do startup allocation and other work uh, by themselves. So basically, uh, I think uh, comparing to some other uh, to such institutions as maybe as DOE and you say projects, I think Nix is very flexible and this cracking is very flexible because it allows to large very very large uh, very large jobs and also very small jobs at the same time so that way we have i think this is uh, probably a key to to the very high utilization of kraken and uh, so uh, we were trying to exploit that um, so overall the science goals uh, is uh, material science modeling and and particularly we are focusing on carbon materials these carbon materials are basically now very, very interesting because of the properties, especially such things like uh, graphene on carbon nanotubes, and they are very interesting. But they also, at the same time, they are very challenging. So, uh, because it's multi-scale physics, so very processes are sometimes they scale from from sub femtosecond time scale, out of uh, femtosecond time scale, up to the microsecond time scale on the experimental phase. So, so overall, there is uh, usually. Uh, one needs to employ uh, several combination of different methods. We are focusing particularly on different molecular dynamics approaches. So on this uh, slide, I'm just showing a uh, general overview of, uh, for those who are not experts in dynamics, what one can expect uh, in molecular dynamics. So basically, the, each column corresponds to different, different type of uh, molecular dynamics. And in principle, in chemistry, material science, and physics, 
we are interested in electrons and nuclei, right? So everything to what category are we in talking about? It depends on how do we treat electrons and or if we treat or if we don't treat electrons or if we neglect and what do we do? What do we do with with nuclei? So like the mid section talks about. Uh, about uh, presents, maybe I can show here. This part uh, presents basically about what do we do with electrons, if we have electrons and if we don't have, and this bottom part, mm -hmm. this section basically says, okay, what do we do with nuclei? So the first column, parameterized force fields, is the situation in which we don't have any electrons. We neglect electrons, and then uh, we ne one can neglect electrons and have just uh, some maybe some fitted potential energy surface or maybe some force fields. So in that approach, uh, allows, since there is no electrons, it allows for a very, la very large system. It's quite popular, in, especially in, in uh, biochemists, in mod modeling uh, biological systems. So, uh, but of course, there, there are no electrons. So, so the uh, complexity grows uh, from the left to right. Right. So, uh, the next approach, if one wants to model some, have some chemistry involved, and then, uh, then, uh, then the, the first approach is to do Born-Oppenheimer uh, type molecular dynamics. Oh? Hello. Hi. Hang on a second. I'll mute participants. Presentation mode is now enabled. There you go, Jasic. Oh, rats. He's dialed in as a participant, I think. Presentation mode is now disabled. Hi, hi Jasic. I think you're dialed in as a participant rather than the host, so I can't hear everyone because I can't hear you. So nobody can um, hear me? Well, I can, but if I try to that background... What should I, so what should I do now? Dial in with the... Um, here, I'll, I'll, let me say that other number to use. So should I restart my presentation? No, no, the presentation's fine. I'll give you another phone number to dial. I'll send it in okay. chat. Just a second. Okay. Yep. Presentation mode is now enabled. Okay, one second. I'm going to give JASIC the right web conference. One second here, Jasic. Okay, I just sent you the host code, so just dial back in to the 866-939-8416 number with that, um, that other code, and then you should be able to start speaking and we'll be able to, to hear you. We'll give it just a minute here for JSIC to redial. Oh, no need to stop the presentation. Oh, I guess he does to read the email. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> If, it, if you can look at the chat on the webinar, that's where I sent it to you. I'll, I'll um, send it by email now, too, but it's in the chat on the webinar. Presentation mode is now disabled. Jasic, are you there? Okay, he must be dialing back in, hopefully. Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay, so my question is this. Should I start from the beginning? No, 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 no. Okay. 
No, just just pick up where you. Just, yeah, that's just fine. Yep, just keep going. All right, so we have, uh, so basically we have, uh, you can start either from parameterized force with there is no electron. The other option is to do this uh, born oppenheimer dynamics in which you can have, uh, uh, you can you can have uh, some uh, electrons solved from time independent Schrodinger equation. If you want to do, uh, and then uh, nuclei treated classically, then if you want to do some more work, if you are interested in some classical qu quantum dynamical treatments for electrons or for nuclei, you can do either one of these two. So, for example, we are so we are actually involved in all of these uh, four approaches. So this is the von Neumann dynamics. It's a, uh, in, uh, we, use, we are using this for quantum dynamical treatment for electrons and Boinam Bohmian trajectories for quantum dynamical treatment for selected nuclei. So uh, next slide. Uh, so we have we have expertise in all these areas, and so I think we are very uh, well set to uh, to uh, model such problems. So um, so I will be talking now about this uh, Bohmian dynamics, which is a, uh, one of the component of, of this of this project, and uh, in collaboration with Sofia Garashtuk. So <clears throat> so this is uh, in this method what we are trying to do. We are trying to combine the approach that uh, Sofia is uh, developing. Uh, the theory is uh, developing for the last few years, and. Uh, Basically, the, the the objective is uh, she had uh, the objective is to convert a, a sequential code that was very specific for a molecular system into a general uh, approach, into general and efficient approach that can be used for any molecular systems, and is not limited to uh, one or two problems, uh, specific problems. So basically, the idea was that uh, in the past. Uh, usually the system was where the problem, uh, the code was working with a, a specifically fitted uh, potential energy surface. So it was only designed for a specific problem. So, and it was only working for a few atoms, for a very few atoms. And we want to, instead of this, we want to do several hundreds of atoms, be able to, to, to model several hundreds of atoms. And, uh, and we do not want to do a fitted potential energy surface because it's, uh, it's uh, not general. But instead of this, to have some generality, we decided that uh, we can do, we can combine this uh, this code uh, with uh, on-the-fly electronic structure calculations. And of course, electronic structure calculations are are expensive, so uh, especially in the molecular dynamics mode. So we have to parallelize this. So the sequential code we needed to change into parallel version. <clears throat> So here is the overview of the theory. So basically, we start from uh, this uh, time dependent Schrodinger equation. You can see it here. For simplicity, we have on the x. Uh, the x corresponds only to this quantum uh, quantum uh, degrees of freedom. And basically, this uh, the one can expect. Okay, the solution is of course wave function. This uh, and you can combine it. Either, uh, we can represent it in the polar uh, polar version, in which you have. Uh, some real, uh, some amplitude, amplitude a here, amplitude a here, and uh, which is a real, real value, and there is exponent which is uh, phase, which corresponds to phase. And then you can, it is possible to actually to convert this, uh, this time dependent Schrodinger equation into uh, into a form, in which into uh, sometimes it's called into so-called hydrodynamic form, in which you can model, uh, one can model. Uh, Ensemble of uh, trajectories uh, to, to model quantum dynamic quantum dynamics of the of the selected let's say selected one selected proton. Uh, to inst instead of uh, to model this quantum effect of the, for this quantum proton uh, through modeling an ensemble of trajectories and then each uh, the trajectories uh, almost classically it's almost classically because in addition to this you can see instead of the to the in in addition to the uh, Classical potential. There is also some additional quantum potential. So basically, it's an ensemble like uh, 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 molecular dynamics, uh, uh, in, in which, in addition to the classical potential, classical gradients of the forces, gradients of the gradients of the potential energy surface, there is additional component, quantum component, which comes from the wave function. The a corresponds to the, the wave function. To the then how do we choose initially the position of the uh, the wave function? So basically, the, wherever there is a maximum of the uh, the, the non-zero amplitude, non-zero amplitude corresponds to the probability of finding the particle in that space. So whenever there is more, uh, the higher probability, the more trajectories we have in that uh, that uh, that area. The less probability, we don't we have a less. Uh, Less, uh, pr uh, less trajectory. So basically, here is the on the right side you can see this uh, example problem that we want to model. This uh, 
proton transfer uh, in uh, soybean lipoxygenase. So this, this uh, yellow uh, ball here in the center corresponds to the quantum hydrogen. And then uh, there is some experimental evidences that uh, experimental evidences that uh, there is a tunneling, uh, this proton transfer, uh, this hydrogen transfer is a, uh, cannot be treated classically because there's a tunneling between uh, uh, associated with this. So there is, uh, so eight, there is a kinetic, uh, in experimental measurement, there is uh, we were measuring kinetic isotope effect. And in a typical situation, when there is uh, hydrogen can be treated classically, it's about uh, few, the value for the kinetic isotope effect is few. What is kinetic isotope effect? Kinetic isotope effect is the, is the difference between rate constant measured experimentally uh, when one replaces the uh, hydrogen with deuterium. Deuterium is just, uh, is from the chemical point of view, is the same, except it has higher masses, right? So, so it's one electron and uh, and uh, and and uh, instead of proton we have uh, one proton and one uh, one neutron right so the the mass is about twice the mass of this the the system is about twice large so uh, if if everything behaves classically then one would, would expect uh, uh, that the kinetic isotope effect that is the difference between rate constant how quickly reaction goes is about uh, few but here it's about 81. Experimental measurements say it's about 81. Also, the the kinetic isotope effect does not depend on the on the uh, temperature, which was also unusual. All right. So what do we do with this? Right. So we want to combine this. Uh, our approach we want to combine this Bohmian dynamics with electronic structure, and this is, as I mentioned, is very expensive. Right. So one needs to choose very very inexpensive approach. So we decided to use uh, approximate uh, density functional tight binding, which is approximate DFT. And it gives us rather uh, optimal ratio of quality to the computational cost. So to give you an idea how uh, what, what what can expect, right? If we if we want to model 10,000 steps, and if we can spend four minutes for evaluation of one energy and forces for during one step, then this four minutes translates uh, t times 10,000 translates into one month. So uh, so this is why. Uh, and also, we can if you want to do this. Uh, if you want to model several trajectories that would correspond to this, uh, to do the sampling of the trajectory, this would be even more expensive. So, so this is why we choose uh, this density functional tidy binding, and we use it within Born-Oppenheimer approximation. So, on this slide, I'm showing just the just the overview of the literature for the uh, this electronic structure approach. So, we use this uh, Estner approach for uh, SCC DFTB, which stands uh, self-consistent charges uh, density functional tidy binding. So, the quality of this approach is something approximate to to uh, to the potential uh, bit relief potential of, of DFT. So. <clears throat> The next, this, here is the overview of the general algorithm so, uh, on Kraken. So uh, the first step is uh, some initialization. So we, do that, uh, we initialize the, uh, all the trajectories, uh, the, the program, um, uh, and read the input files, and, uh, this, uh, and read the, also the tables with DFTB parameters. Then it says this is distributed, uh, this is con compressed packed and distributed across the different uh, different nodes. Then uh, overall, what we decided to do is that uh, mm, then we distribute the work in the, this middle section, distribution of the work. So basically, we can ex we want to run uh, about a uh, few thousand trajectories. So the, uh, to give you an idea, uh, on Kraken, we have about uh, almost 10,000 nodes. So we can probably utilize uh, whole Kraken if you want. But for the efficient, so far, we have been using up to maybe 5,000 for the tests that we have done. We have been testing up to 5,000 uh, 5, 5, nodes. And then, uh, depending on the system, uh, so we distribute. Uh, we basically we have uh, we usually uh, decide to for the given number of MPI tasks we split uh, decide that one one MPI task take, takes care about uh, a few consecutive a few consecutive uh, trajectories. And then there is uh, after the, the, the uh, so the middle section is so we are distributing especially this DFTB energy and for evaluation of DFTB energy and forces and this is also open MP parallel and scale uh, there is diagonalization involved so overall scales this mid section scales uh, and uh, cubically with the number of electrons involved and we had some also there is some, uh, we have been optimizing this uh, with help of Bilal Hadi but that is another story. 
So after everything is uh, is done, then with this uh, uh, information about uh, sample potential energy surface and the forces has to be gathered uh, together and uh, and uh, f uh, in order so one can evaluate the wave function, corresponding wave function, and uh, quantum potential for the propagation of, of nuclei. So once this is done, then uh, we propagate the, uh, the nuclei and we continue the, the loop. And that's the, the, this big loop, MD loop, over uh, change the time and continue. So overall, uh, uh, we don't have, uh, uh, for the efficiency, we, we are, we, we, I think we have a very good efficiency. Here is the uh, information about uh, very rather not that big system, only 53 atoms, but it's uh, order of magnitude more than what we were doing, what uh, Sonia had been doing. So here is the timing you can see on the vertical axis. It's a uh, timing seconds for uh, uh, one steps. On the horizontal axis, the number of CPU used. CPU used. So uh, for 1,000 trajectories, for 1,000 quantum trajectories. And you can see that uh, the, on the, if we would be doing this sequentially, it would take about uh, one step takes about 42 minutes. So, uh, but we have uh, we have a good scaling, uh, and we can uh, we can basically the information the, the numbers shown here are for up to 500 uh, 500 processors. You can see we are, have almost linear scaling. Very in ideally ideal time would be five seconds. We get nine seconds, so we are not losing very much. Probably uh, the the bottom line would be depending on uh, the pot, the bottom. Uh, would be depending very much on how many nodes we have, how many trajectories we are uh, handling. So probably the best ratio, the optimal ratio would be about three trajectories per, per one MPI task for the load balancing because uh, the cost of the energy may, be, may depend on the uh, positions. So, uh, so if this time, if we would be doing this sequentially, so we reduce this uh, one step to five seconds, we would be doing this uh, this sequentially, then this 42, uh, and we, if you would be spending 42 minutes per one MD step, then it would take us about um, almost about 10 months to to complete uh, 10,000 steps simulations. But now we can do that about within one day. So here is the example example uh, example simulations uh, which we will be submitting with the uh, with the method to uh, soon with the. Uh, uh, overview of the method. So you can see here on the on the bottom. This is a graphing sheet, and then we are modeling uh, 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 hydrogenation of this graphene sheet. So you can see here that part. Uh, this ball here, this bunch of little balls, corresponds to the quantum proton, and which tiny ball corresponds to different trajectory. So what I'm going to show you is you're going to see all 1,000 trajectories. So we have uh, test uh, studied 1,000 trajectories here can see you're going to see 1,000 trajectories at once, right? So this hydrogen has some uh, initial kinetic energy is going towards this, uh, towards this, is, sorry, is, go, is, is attacking, is uh, towards this carbon atom, towards the lat lattice carbon. So here's on the left side, you can see potential energy surface. So there is, you can see there is some well, uh, if the, if the, uh, near the, about one axon. This corresponds to the, bo uh, to the bond between carbon and hydrogen. There is also some well here, so you can expect that if the hydrogen, if the hydrogen comes, there is some of the, there is some probability that this hydrogen will bounce back from the wall. There is some probability that the hydrogen can get to the well and stays there, right? So, uh, so the, uh, the number of tra trajectory that we, so let me play that movie, so you can see the, uh, there is. Uh, Okay, so the number of the the, uh, the number of the trajectories that stays inside this circle corresponds to corresponds to uh, the probability for the uh, for the adsorption of hydrogen and the, for the sticking of the hydrogen to the surface. The number of the trajectories that are behind the out of the circle uh, circle would the oval would correspond to the probability of reflection hydrogen. So I'll play again. I, I, I'll play this again. You can see everything is moving, even the lattice, the carbon lattice, uh, graphene lattice, also moving here. So that's uh, what we are. Uh, this is an ongoing project, and hopefully will be published soon. So uh, here is the next project we are also working currently on. That the, this uh, this is uh, this proton transfer in soluble oxygenase. This is uh, 
the same system that I was mentioning at the beginning when I was introducing the Bohmian dynamics. But we are only here. We are only modeling on the, for now. We are only focusing on the active side. So we cut out everything. We just keep the uh, the uh, the the active side of this uh, of this lip oxygenase. The left side corresponds to the lip oxygenase, and the right side corresponds to the uh, to the linoleic acids. And then the, on the left side of the of the slide, you can see how the uh, potential energy surface changes. So basically, one can expect that there is uh, two double well. It's a two double well type uh, problem, right? So we start from the hydrogen on the on the right side on the on one well, and there is a probability. Uh, uh, that the uh, hydrogen should uh, should move from the one well from a single well to the another well. So, but there is this is a cooperative uh, motion. So basically, it cannot move if uh, it has to be involved all uh, lip oxygenase. Whole system has to be involved. So uh, here is the preliminary results for the preliminary simulations for the to show the proton motion. You can see only I, I'm showing we have run about uh, here 4,500 uh, trajectories, but I'm showing only uh, 100 uh, probably most uh, most uh, most uh, most important. So you can see the probabilities both correspond to to wherever there, there is a high probability initially high probability of the of the wave function. So let me play that movie for you quickly. Okay. So you can see that the proton is moving from the linoleic acid, and there is some probability that uh, towards the active side, and it's going. There is some probability some trajectories can stay uh, uh, on the on the left side, on the soybean epoxygenate side. So okay, that's basically all what I wanted to show you today. On the acknowledgement side, here is the the group of collaborators, and then especially in the circles I mark those people who were particularly involved in the in the in this project. So thank you very much, and. I'm open for your questions. Basic, thank you very much. Let me uh, check to make sure I've got the lines unmuted here. Presentation mode is now enabled. Presentation mode is now disabled. Okay. Uh, any but, questions, mm -hmm. questions from anyone on the line for JASIC? Hey, uh, JASIC? Yes. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, you used uh, the extended huckle. Yes. Based on DFTB, I mean, but uh, are the simulations using the DFTB or the extended Huckel model? DF DFTB is an extended Huckel model, so we use DFTB. It's SEC DFTB, that's what we use. Okay. Uh, so the extended Huckel itself will be much faster, right? Uh, well, this is very fast. This DFTB is very fast, so it depends on. There is your, you can always balance whatever you want if you want to, how much you want to spend on the quality versus the cost, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Jason. I was really impressed with the scaling numbers that you got, and also the uh, the long history of, of of the code and how you were able to optimize something. You know, it looked like it was initially written in the mid '80s, so that's you know that carries along a lot of baggage through the years. I think. Um, what was the connection? You mentioned the um, EPSCore desktop to TerraGrid project. Is this, how does this fit into that? How does this fit into that? So basically, EPSCore, uh, uh, the EPSCore funded, uh, there are two components in the EPSCore, this NSF EPSCore. There's, there was a funding of infrastructure. Maybe I'll go back to the, uh, there was a funding for the infrastructure to, and there was a funding for uh, human resources. I was, uh, I was funded through that project. So basically what we, uh, so uh, the connection was that, uh, we want to bring a new users to exceed resources and that uh, and to help uh, help uh, bridge between the, those uh, institutions with the petascale resources. So that's the, that's the connection. So uh, within this. Uh, so that's the connection to the South Carolina PI. That's right. That's the connection yeah. to South Carolina PI. PI. That is that's right. Great. Very, we, yeah. also, we also we also uh, agreed to uh, uh, to to allow up to 10 percent to whoever was uh, willing uh, just to try a crack and to in was just in material science modeling. So we were also um, we were sort of open for anyone who s s want to try without very much obligations. Uh, so that's that's right. Okay. 
Okay, so the desktop to TerraGrid was sort of a, like an easier on-ramp, perhaps, because you were giving out the allocations? That's right, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay thank, thank you very much. Very impressive results. Um, sorry for some of the technical difficulties here and there today. Um, I want to thank both of our speakers for taking the time to prepare such excellent presentations. These will be up on YouTube. The slides will be up also pointers to the speaker's contact information for any questions after the fact. Um, any more questions from the audience before I conclude the webinar? Very good. Thank you very much, Dora. Thank you very much, Jacek. We'll, okay, thank uh, you. Talk, yep, talk to everyone next month on the next symposium in May. Bye. Thank you. Bye.